Okay, so let's show it to you coming here. Oh, I'm all for that. Cheers. <laughs> yeah. Oh. services to the community and things like that. I like pictures and stuff, but I feel like me talking shows more of who I am. Right, because of course. I don't, know, I don't know, I don't have the best angles. I don't know, I feel like myself <laughs> that day. I look bloated. Why my lips look so small? Like, <laughs> hosting is like whatever. Ha ha, laugh. You forget about what the ha ha look like. Listen to what I'm saying. When did you start to get like a big following on social media? Was it after YouTube? After YouTube, but you know what's crazy? I've had a big following on, on the internet since I started MySpace which was the weirdest thing ever because I didn't think I even mattered. Like I was just like, whatever, well, I'm just taking pictures in my outfit every day and selfies. And someone sent me a message one time saying, you have another page? And I was like, I don't have another page. And I click on it and it, it was another MySpace page with my pictures. I thought I had a long lost twin for one second. I was like, wait, I know I took these pictures. <laughs> and I was like, why her page looks better than mine? She has all these glitter things, these slideshows. I was like, how did she do that? So I started to catch on that people were seeing my pictures. And then I started to get a lot of requests on MySpace. A lot. So on MySpace, 6,000 friends was a lot. Like people kept adding me, adding me. And I was like, damn, people really want to be my friend. So then I went to Twitter and I had like 20, I still have the same amount of Twitter followers for some reason, 22K, something like that. That shit does not change. But I was, and then on YouTube, I got lots of views and lots of hits on there. And people started sending me merchandise to promote. And they're like, talk about my shirt and not send it to you, blah. And I thought it was cool. And before the whole, this whole um, social media influencer yeah. ambassadors program started. Mm -hmm. So I was like, this is crazy how I've been doing this for so long. And like, I could be making crazy money with these other girls and I just mm -hmm. didn't care to do that. I was doing it because I wanted to. So tell me a little bit about you that people seem to love about you on social media. Okay, so where do I begin? No, I'm just kidding. Okay. <laughs> they always tell me, I love um, your personality. You motivate me and you're always so happy and positive. And uh, sometimes I'm just like, it's crazy how people compliment you on that because that's like second nature to me. So I'm like, that's really like nothing to compliment. But then I think about it, there are people who walk around negative and mm -hmm. always talking bad about people. Or like, you ever follow someone on Instagram and you see them constantly complaining or like posting like just mean things about other people? Yeah. I'm never the type of person like to like bash and think it's funny. Like, I don't know, I just don't like to do that. But that's something I get all the time. Like, you're so happy, you're so positive, I see. <laughs> so, yeah. How do you keep positive? Because I know that's a question that a lot of people have been asking you when you posted that you were going to be interviewing here? Yeah, um, to be honest with you, I feel like it was embedded in me through my grandmother from when I was younger. Um, also, I've been through so many things in life, I had like no choice but to be positive. I feel like I'm going to get emotional. Okay, so I was I was saying that um, I, I was, and I feel like being positive was embedded in me. My family is very outgoing and happy, and we get complimented on that all the time, like my mother, my uncle, um, my grandmother. My uncle Richie was always yelling and cursing, he always seemed negative, but he's still something about him people love. Like they love when he would complain. Like they think it's the funniest <laughs> thing ever. So like also okay, it's embedded in me through my grandmother. But um we 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 as a family have been through so much, we had no choice but to stay positive. And I myself, um, I grew up without my dad and then my mother, I felt like even though my mom probably beat me for saying this, I felt like she was very mean to me as a kid because of him. Middle school, I thought about if I could make a two times a day to care. That's how bad I was picked up. Really? Yeah. But um, what would pe people like believe about clothes and how I looked? Because I didn't have Jordans. I had like um, what did I have? Chuck Taylors, Converse, mm -hmm. which is dope. But mm -hmm. back then, it's like yeah, that's not you're not cool. You're right. Like, and then I had frizzy hair. I had glasses. I had glasses up until eleventh grade. That's when I got rid of them. I was hide. I was hiding my mom. I was ashamed of my mold. How would you hide it? And with my glasses, I'd wear them oh, right there. Okay. And I don't want no one to see my mold. But now I'm like, I love my mold. <laughs> Marilyn Rowey. Marilyn Monroe. <laughs> but um yeah, I, I I was picked on because of like the clothes that I wear are I was very awkward mm -hmm. and I, I was uh, goofy. Some people, my close friends loved it, but people would, boy, boys always pick on me too, mainly boys. They think boys pick on you because they like you, but I don't think it was always that. I think it was just me. Yeah. People like so, to be mean. 
Do people um, cyber bully you on social media? Do they? Oh my god, I used to get so many hateful comments, but the love would outweigh it. So mm. I, that's the reason why I always stood around. But there was one time in my life I deleted my my social media. My mother made me. It was MySpace era when I was wow. like 17. Mm -hmm. I was bullied so bad. Like seven accounts with my pictures, they were harassing me. They were like, you stupid bitch, we're gonna find you. Um, we know that you work in the supermarket because I worked at Sea town mm -hmm. And I had my, my coat on, yeah. I think you were like jacket. Mm -hmm. They were like, we know that you work in Sea town we're gonna find you. And they were like, you're ugly, you can see it, all you do is take pictures. It's funny because I was so not into myself, but I had no choice. Was, I see myself every day, so you have to of course. love yourself, right? So I would take selfies all the time in my grandmother's bathroom, and it was like dim in there. It was not even like, it was the project bathroom, okay? Mm -hmm. She was in the projects, white cloth projects. Shout out to my really? <laughs> Yeah, she was the white cloth project. I, and I always was with grandma. So mm -hmm. I take my selfies, and people, girls would steal it because I would wear funky jewelry and I'd always wear pink. Everything had to be pink. Mm -hmm. Hello Kitty. So it's so funny because someone today was like, ask her if her obsession with pink is still real. It's still real. <laughs> it's still real. Like today, I was just like, I have to wear something pink. I can't go to the show and not wear pink. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not as strong as it used to be. I felt like I was clinging to pink for my identity because I was still insecure and didn't know who I wanted to be. So pink was helping me like stand out or like, because people were like, that's the girl that wears pink all the time. Mm -hmm. So I had something, but now I'm secure with myself and who I am. I don't need anything, Just I'm just myself, like this is me. But back then I was like, they have to know me as a pinky girl. Because yeah. that's when I started to get positive attention instead of just being picked on. Gotcha. And I started doing that pink thing for I think like middle school. Remember one time, my aunt took me for school shopping. She took me to New York and Company. Really? That's school shopping. Yeah, and I'm like, this is like grown ass women's clothes. <laughs> yeah, I'm right, like, cool. okay, I'm gonna get three button downs and like a uh, three, like a three quarter sweater. Like, yeah. who wears that? It's like seventh grade, eighth grade. So I was picking all these pink clothes. That was the cutest ones, the youngest looking ones. And then I just kept wearing pink. Every time my grandma would give me money, mm -hmm. she gave me money every month. I would go shopping and wear both. And I didn't care. I said, you know, I'm about cheap stuff. I don't care. I don't got money. Yeah. So I would like stretch it and mm -hmm. everything started building up and I was like, I don't want it if it's not pink. And it became an extreme exception. Of <laughs> like my ex, I had I had him wearing pink. Everyone was like, what the hell did your man deal with you wearing pink? But really? he, he was cool with it. So How long were you guys together? We were together for five years. Oh wow. We married for five years at a young age. Wow. What age did you get married? I got, I got married at 19. I can't even know. I don't even know what the hell I was thinking. Like, I was like 19 years old. That's so young. That is young. You think that you know everything and you think that you're ready. And now that I'm now that I'm 30, I'm looking back and like, wow, I really didn't know much about relationships. And I really am grateful for how he dealt with me because I was very insecure. If you really love someone, you trust them, give them space. If they're going to cheat on you, they will because of who they are, not because of who you are. Mm -hmm. You know, like, no one can tell you, oh, you pushed me to do. No, it's who you are. How did you deal with the divorce? Um, it was difficult to deal with, but it was something I needed to go through because if I didn't get my divorce in 2012, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have been able to spend the year I spent with my grandmother and my uncle before my uncle died. My uncle died of cancer, liver cancer. Oh, I'm so sorry. I don't know what's up, thank you. Um, and then my grandmother got throat cancer right after. And I got to hang out with her and then I think good health. So mm -hmm. I was very grateful for that. I was like, everything happens for a reason. Like this, even through bad things, something good comes out of it. I got to spend mm -hmm. a year with them and um, yeah. It was difficult because social media and because obviously memories, memories can really um, screw with you. Yeah. You know, even with like f friendship, let's say you have, you're not a friend with someone mm -hmm. anymore, but you have those good memories, it makes you kind of want to hit them up and they're, yeah. like, they're not even a like, good friend to me, so I'm just going to Yep. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about bullying because I know when I asked you specifically, like, what would you like to talk about? That was one of the first things that bullying. you mentioned. Yeah. So, like, what would you want to say to girls who are being bullied or have been bullied before? Um. What well, one thing I do want to say is, you um, you have to really believe in who you are, right? So when you look in the mirror, you have to tell yourself, okay, I'm this, I'm that. Now, if you, if you really feel negative about yourself, you have to really, um, I pray to God first of all, because I feel like that negativity is just stopping you from who you truly are, and I feel like it's just like, like it's the devil. I say it's the devil because um, it's things that's per, um, stopping you from following your dreams or pursuing a job or anything, right? So you have to really love yourself and, and love your flaws because no one's perfect. I don't care who you see on TV or whoever you, you, you admire. They have flaws that they don't love, but they choose to overcome it for what you, from you know, the people that are strong enough to handle it. Um, just um, when it comes down to bullying, don't let these people bring you low enough where you want to harm yourself because we all go through things in life. And people that like to make fun of these people because they envy you for some reason. 
Like you never think that somebody so popular and so rich would want to be like someone who's not so popular, who's overweight or something, but they see something in you that you don't see and that's when they're attacking you. And I learned that the hard way because these people that used to really hurt me and try to crush me later on, they were like, I envied you because you were always happy. Or I envied you because, you know, people always loved you but never saw your you know mistakes that you would make. And I was just like, you envy me? Yeah, right. But then it really would come down to that. It's like a, a jealousy thing, whether you believe it or not, it is. So, and there's people out there who need you in their lives, whether you believe that or not, because Everyone has their own little worlds, and like you're something big in someone's little world. And don't hurt yourself or, or believe these negative things because you're here for a reason, and right now you don't get it. But in the future, it's gonna make complete sense. Because I was bullied so bad, like I said, I wanted to kill myself, and then I never did. Because I'm glad I didn't. Because I have so many people who, who write to me like Jenny. I was so depressed today. My ex cheated on me. My dad did this. My mom did this. But I looked at your snaps and you made me smile. And you and you posted something that changed my whole attitude. And I'm like, wow, I really had this impact on somebody. Because why would they write that to me? Like, right. It's in public. It's a private message. It's not like I'm gonna give them a shout out. Like right. shout out to this person. No, it's like you wrote to me because I really did help you that day. So I really feel like um. You never know who needs to see your smile. And that quote was like one of my favorites because it's true. You walk around like angry and you're looking grumpy, you're gonna get that back. But I notice when I'm like smiling, someone smiles back and then like my whole day is like something to go better. It sounds cheesy like Pleasantville, but it's like, <laughs> like oh dear, I got a butter hole in my pocket. Like, but it's like, it is what it is. Like it, don't don't let people try to bring you down because they, they need, they feed off that. You need to like stand strong. And, and just because you don't have Jordans doesn't mean you're not a good person. Like, right. Be a good person. Who gives a shit if you don't have money? Like, mm -hmm. And there's this little boy that was talking about that. I don't know if you've ever seen him. He went like viral. He was talking about how people, um, you need to, something about how like, yeah, I don't have the coolest clothes, but I'm still a good person. And it was just the cutest thing. It was a young man. He was like eight years old saying it. And I was like, see, this is stuff that kids like this need to keep talking because other kids need to follow by example. Because they right. see you picking on someone, they're going to copy. Mm -hmm. So parents need to step up too and stop their kids yeah. from doing those things because it's all it's all a domino effect but I really do feel like bullying needs to be talked about a lot more not just because of that situation where that kid was um that kid that JLo posted Rihanna posted mm -hmm. and then everyone like well his family is racist and so he probably deserved it I'm like that has nothing to do with anything right. it's not it's not his fault he's a product of his environment you have to teach him differently if, sometimes some parents are not good parents but if you have a good someone around you a good influence around you you can overcome that I know I grew up sometimes my family members would say stuff about black people like, oh, you think you're black, you're not black, you're Hispanic. And I'm like, I don't get it. What are you talking about? And, <laughs> you know, I'm like, I love what I like. I love what I love. I like what I like. It doesn't have anything to do with me being Hispanic. Right. So, anyway, it's all about influencing and trying to stay positive and don't let, I don't know, I just feel so bad. So I was so like, every, all these <laughs> kids that are being picked on. It's like, that's why I just want to emphasize. We have to be po more positive. Stop doing these um, Instagram videos where we're making fun of people. Like, how about we talk more about positive things? I mean, we could joke around. Right. But a lot of people like to repost negative things. And this is, that's another sign of bullying. Yep. Yeah, like, um, I don't know. Just, okay, for example, um, people that talk about that girl that was rude to her mom. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I she became mom. so popular. Yeah, she became really popular. The yeah. one I was on, like, Jerry Springer. Jerry Springer or something. Or and I think it's, like, it's weird that, that that's what took off. But that girl has problems. And people bashing her is not really adding to anything. It's just, like, I just think that you need to take the high road, just ignore it. It's not for you, just ignore it. You know? Right, it's and, true. Uh, yeah, I just think people need to get it together. <laughs> <laughs> Sip, because I'm getting thirsty. I'm thinking of moving to LA, actually. Really? Today. When? In a couple of months. She was not come with you. <laughs> yeah, come girl. I definitely want to check out LA. Everyone's like saying there's a lot of fake people out there. But yeah. I feel like I, I've been through, I've been around a lot of vibes and I can sense the fake energy and I'm not really concerned about that. I'm like maybe I need to bring my realness, who knows? Like mm -hmm. I just wanna try it out. So I'm hoping to get my hands on some gigs and stuff like that. There that would be really cool. I mean New York is cool too. Have but you I'm lived here forever? Oh my life. And I'm <laughs> over it. I don't have any children. I think it's a good idea to go. Yeah. Because yeah. Brooklyn Brooklyn's always gonna be here. New York is always gonna be here. Yeah, it's always gonna be here. It's not gonna move. Yeah. <laughs> it's not. And grandma don't wanna move with me either. Grandma come with me that she's like, no. I, I stay in Brooklyn. I'm like, you're from Puerto Rico. We're not even from Brooklyn. She's like, no, I'm from Brooklyn. <laughs> and then you're always posting videos of her. She's so cute. She's the realest. <laughs> Grandma was a trap queen. Yeah. She was legit. She don't, probably don't want me talking about that, but yeah. she used to sell <laughs> and stuff. I'm like, Grandma, I really? been looking at my grandma, you did that? You never got called by the cops, you bad. I would love my grandma to have like autobiography, because that woman 
She is amazing. Like, she's more than just like a cute old lady. She has tattoos on her knuckles. Everyone's like, your grandma must have been a gangster. She really, truly is. Not, I'm not saying something to glorify, yeah. but it's something to be proud of that she did that and came out of that. Mm. Sometimes you feel like you have no, some people feel like there's no way out, but there's right. a way out. You don't have to do what everyone in your hood is doing. Like, you can step out and change. You know, you remember the game MASH? Remember the game MASH? You read MASH? Yeah. Like, it, I would always go to Hawaii and always get Hawaii. I'm like, I have to live in Hawaii. <laughs> So that's my goal to do the white, but I really feel like I'm one of those ladies that's supposed to be like super dark with coconut oil on my hair all day long, like frying fish. <laughs> that's the life. Yeah, like, I don't like every time I go on vacation, I'm like, I wish we could just pack my bags and move here. Just go. Because you know what is a break from everything? New York is like so crazy, so, fast so pace. dirty sometimes. Some parts are dirty. Um, people are like rude, but because everyone's like in a rush. And um, the islands, you're just like, wow. It's really like, come, na, na, na. <laughs> I fell in love with Barbados. I went to Barbados and I kept, that's where the God I was running out there. Somebody asked me what my name was, I said, Rihanna. I said, your name is not Rihanna. <laughs> it is Rihanna. What's your last name? I said, Rihanna Gonzalez. <laughs> your name is not Rihanna Gonzalez. <laughs> but the people in Barbados are so sweet. So if you ever go on vacation, go to Barbados. This K is underrated. It's so, it's so beautiful there. How do you feel about social media? I love, love it and hate it. I love it because it gave me so many good opportunities. Yeah. Like like Lady Foot Locker reached out to me. Um, Rihanna invited me to her concert. Really? Yeah. Rihanna oh, that's so dope. <laughs> Dude, Rihanna was like when Rihanna invited me to her concert, and I thought I was I thought that was dope enough because I posted her video on my page, and um, I was like, yo, I need to go see Rihanna concert. She's killing it because she looks so cute. I loved her hair, her dance moves, everything was dope. And then she's like, bitch, come. No, she said, bitch, bring your cute ass. Bring your cute ass. I saw that when I was at work, and I was just to light in the bathroom. I was like, ah! I screamed. The doctor was like, what's wrong with you? No. She's like, where are you from? I said, Brooklyn. She said, okay, so then we're definitely going to get you tickets. I kept checking my DMs, nothing. Four days later on a Sunday, I, she comments again, like, bitch, check your email. Uh, I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> my email. I should be checking my email. I don't check my email. It's always like, it's like 21 million, I don't know what the hell's on there. So I checked my email and Rihanna's assistant DM, I mean, emailed me and said, um, you know, which concert you want to go to Wednesday or Sunday, whatever. So I told my best friend, I'm going to pick one person. I had to pick my best friend, Jesse, um, Mariah Death. <laughs> we go to the concert. Me and my name is Jenny Gonzalez. And then this lady goes, are you Jenny? Rihanna insisted that I got you here. And I was like, what? She's like, she really wants to meet you. And I was like, oh, hey. I know I couldn't believe it. So after the concert, I just started charging my phone because it was in a dime. It's like no service at the Barclays Center. It was so annoying. Yeah. You're trying to post things and everything's swirling. <laughs> post it. So I finally started getting service and I have an email from the assistant saying, hey, are you still here? Y'all wants to meet you. I almost threw my cell phone across that bathroom, and this girl was in the bathroom. She washed her hands. She's like, what? Rihanna wants to meet you? My best friend, she's so little. She was looking at her like, she's not talking to me. And the girl was like, okay. She just walked out. It was like so funny, but awkward. Like I was too hyped to even say anything. So we go, we're backstage. I'm just chilling. I hear Rihanna talking. She turns around. She said, Jenny, you came? And I, I looked at the wall because the wall is behind me. And I was like, she has to talk to the wall because how she's talking to me. Like, but she was just like, I'm so happy you came. She gave me a hug. And she's like so tall. She had her heels on. I had my Tim's on. That is so lit. I'm like, I couldn't I believe it. That. So I asked her, I said, why are you acting? Like, honestly, why are you acting so hyped to meet me? Like, I should be acting this way about you. She's like, I just love your energy. On Instagram, like, you have dope vibes. You're genuine. You didn't act like a fanatic over me. Mm -hmm. You were just another woman showing another woman some love, like genuine love. And I fuck with that. And I think about it, imagine being a celebrity, being super famous, and all you get is these people that want to be around you just because of that. Or because, you know, they love you, but you don't really know if it's true or not. Just because mm -hmm. if you didn't have that money, you didn't have the fame, would they still like you? So I feel like she sensed that I wasn't about the life. And um, I was just being myself. When did this happen? In March 2016, March 27th, 7 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> She's really dope. She was just talking to her family was backstage. They were talking to me. Oh, wow. Her best friends are back there. Um, every, the energy was dope. It was like nothing could top that experience. Like when I wanted to drink, I was like, girl, whatever you want to give me, I'll drink, I'll drink whatever. And then that was it. Getting ready to go out. So I didn't want to overstay. So I'm like, yeah, okay. I was like, all right, thank you so much for everything. And I was like, Rihanna, I'm saucy. And she was like, Jesse, make sure she gets home. And I was like, she cares about me getting home. <laughs> no, but she's so dope. And like, you know, you would think I'm like, you're you're my age and you're a millionaire, billionaire, and you're and you're doing your thing and you're a great you're a great role model, whatever. And I was like, I really don't get it twisted. I'm a big fan of yours. Like, don't think that I'm not a fan. Like, 
Mm -hmm. I know all her songs. She's dope. But meeting her made me love her even more because she's really just a real person. Yeah. And I think that's why she that's has a huge experience, especially if you if you love her, you know. And just because of Instagram. Yeah. Instagram posts. Tell them what you want to say, Rihanna. Snapchat. Wait, we that vision. This bitch is cute as hell in person. I don't, I don't like her. Oh my like, god, I, I love never, you. Ever come on you page snooping? She broke my Instagram that night. It's <laughs> only about words on that night. And how you met your dad? Oh my god, media. I think like I think my dad topped the Rihanna experience. Um, my dad was 19 when he had he, he and my mom, had, you know, conceived me. He was a drug dealer though. Mm. He was young and fell into the wrong group of people and. He, the, the feds busted him or something like that. He got sent away, because he's originally from DR. His mom brought him here when he was like eight, I think. Um, so long story short, my father, I felt like he had a lot of guilt because he felt like he, you know, he messed up. He had my mom and me and he couldn't be with us because you know, he, he made, made a big mistake in his life. To this day, I feel like my father, he would reach out to me, but it was never like an everyday thing. It was like, what's you doing? What are you doing? And it was kind of awkward. And I kind of resented him at some time, at some point, because I'm like, you have all these kids in DR, and you still haven't done anything for me. Right. And like, like you haven't done, I haven't even seen you. You haven't even flown me out to see you. So I was irritated for a long time. And then I finally came to peace with the fact that when you're a parent, you really don't have a manual telling you what to do or how to do things. Like, you're just a human living and learning. So I forgave him. And I think... Once I forgave him in my heart, I think God made this trip happen. I went out to DR with my best friend for a birthday. I hit him up, I was like, hey, I'm going to be in DR. I'm like, no, if you want to see me, we can see each other. Oh my God, I would love to see you, blah, blah, I'm going to come. He drove two hours to come see me. And he came with his family. The cutest little brothers and sisters I've ever seen in my life. Aww. And they're so loving. But my dad, he, he's just like me. Like, looking at him, it was creepy. I, <laughs> I was like, yo, if I was a dude, <laughs> that's me right there. And he laughed. My mom was like, you laugh just like your father. I'm like, how? Like, I didn't meet the guy. But he, he says he helped me when I was one, too. Like, no, I was like, ooh, ooh, that guy. Like, why? Wow, <laughs> so um, I realized I do laugh like him. But he, he, worked, he worked hard. He owns his own fruit and export company. He left that life alone. He made a whole 360. He, he's doing very well. I'm so proud of him. I'm here with me. Say hi, Dad. Hello. <laughs> this, guys, it's my video. Yeah. Yes, a video. Okay, I feel like some parents, like the, especially dads who are not in their kids' lives, they feel like it was too late. My kid is grown. Like they're not gonna want to hear from me. Make the effort. Like even if you feel rejected over and over, make the effort because your kid wants the effort. Because at the end of the day, they're your kid. Your kid doesn't want to chase after you. I didn't want to chase after my dad. I want my dad to chase after me. Of course. And. He would still comment, he'll say stuff, he'll say, you know, message me, see how I'm doing. But we never FaceTime. It was crazy, like, we had all these things we never did. But now, she's like, I got to New York, I FaceTime him, he FaceTime me. Like, Aww, it just so opened. Awesome. Yeah, it's, it's great. So and it's like, it really is never too late. My mom was crying, my grandma was crying, they were so happy. Because they see me, they're like, yo, you look like your father. I wish you could meet your father. And I always, like, pray on the low, like, I pray one day I get to meet my dad. But I never really emphasized or pushed, pushed for it to happen. And when it finally happened, I couldn't. Have wanted it to happen, couldn't have wanted it to happen any better than it did. Mm -hmm. To start the new year, 30 years old, like feeling all grown, and I get to meet my father. So. Yeah. Yeah. Young women, young men need to um, hear this maybe because I think some people don't know my background, but only my close friends know this. Uh, at the age of 10, um, someone very close to my family molested me, mm -hmm. and I didn't say anything. And I was scared. And then three years later, a best friend of mine went to school and, and said that it happened. And it caused like my whole family to unravel, a whole drama. And it was very scary because I thought I was gonna lose my family. I thought I was gonna end up in a foster home because you know people scare you. Like you know people are gonna come investigate. And um, that's why I was like, oh my god, I should never said it. But it's like no, this man should have never done it. It's not that I should never said it. This right. man should never done it. I want anyone who's at, of any age like to never feel. Like it's your fault, first of all. Second of all, to speak up because it's only hurting you. You never know if something is happening to someone else. But I was always in fear, like, oh my God, it's happening to my little sister every day, thinking it's happening, you know. But um, it, affect, it affected me so badly because I would always wonder to myself, did I dream it? Like, why I was like a little girl with glasses? Like, why a frizzy hair? Like, why me and not even attractive? It's not even about that. It's just some people are sick and, you know, they're just evil. Mm -hmm. So I feel like if you're going through something right now, no matter how old you are, speak up. That's I'm happy the sexual harassment stuff is going down because a lot of these men are complaining like, oh, now she wants to say something. It's not about that. It's like it's difficult for you as a woman to say, this happened to me. Especially in the limelight too. Yeah, because it's like, 
why didn't you stand up for yourself? Or why didn't you say something? Or, or maybe you asked for it. Mm -hmm. Maybe you shouldn't have worn that dress or whatever the hell it was. Like me as a little girl, I'm wearing my panties. Like mm -hmm. I'm a little kid, you know. I realized like um, it affected my relationships, sexually caused problems. Um, because in my head, like I just felt gross. Like I, for one, at one time, I just hated men. Period. And then I thought I wanted to be a lesbian. And I was like, that's not working out for me because I don't think I could do one. <laughs> <laughs> but like, it, I really want. That's something that really damaged me for a while. And then one day in church, I prayed, I prayed, and I cried, and I felt like God. Um, helped me through it because I was like, you know what? I didn't ask for it. It happened, but I'm okay. I forgive the person because you cannot move on in life if you don't forgive. No matter what that person does to you, you can forgive. You don't have to be around them. You can forgive in your heart. Like, I know this person has issues. I don't need to be around them. But in your heart, just forgive and um, yeah, speak up. Don't wait three years. Speak up. Talk yeah. to someone. There's people out there do research. Mm -hmm. Talk to your, if you can't trust your mom, if you feel like your mom can't help you or family, talk to someone else. Go to school. Someone can help you through it. Hashtag Me Too came out. Oh yeah. Or yes. like blew up on social media. And it was shit. beautiful. All the women stood up and were black. I, I felt so empowered. And I, mm -hmm. It made me happy because I'm like, see, there is good people out there, and there is humanity still. Yeah. With Donald Trump being president, I'm oh, like, what's girl. going on? <laughs> I'm like, I needed to sit back. <laughs> like I told you, we're moonwalking back into the past. Some of us, not all of us, though. Understand? Strong facts. Okay, so I know that a lot of followers or a lot of people will be shocked that you're 30. I know. You do not look like it at all. Thank you. Thanks <laughs> to my grandma. A lot of people make it seem like, oh, you have to have things figured out by 17, 25. You should be in your career already. There's some days I wake up and I kind of beat myself up about it. Like, sometimes, very rarely though. Because now that I'm 30, I've become so confident in who I am as a woman and as a person mm -hmm. that I'm just like, oh my God, the world's in the palm of my hands. I earned this. Like, you can't sit here and tell me I can't do anything. I'm like, I'm 30. I pay bills. I've done my dues. Like, I've learned. So I deserve to to pursue whatever career I want to. You can't tell me there's an age limit. At 17, you're supposed to get out of high school and go straight to college, but you don't even know what you really want to do. You're just th throwing yourself into something in a young mind. And right. then as you get older and through experiences, you're like, wait a minute, this is not what I want to do. Mm -hmm. So I really feel like there is no age limit. As long as you take care of yourself physically and, and mentally, you're learning and you're willing to learn and grow and know at any age you're never going to stop learning, then you can conquer anything. People put that fear in you because they just want you to rush, rush, rush. And, and get shit straight we can't like it's not like god created the world in seven days why the hell would we like think that we can figure it out just like yeah. that you know don't let anyone make you feel like you're too old but also don't sit around lollygagging too long because it will pass by like this mm -hmm. i really feel like i just got out of high school sometimes like, <laughs> oh my god it's i'm 30 like i, mm -hmm. I just graduated i graduated at 17 and now mm -hmm. i'm 30 so knowing you're not too old to do anything and knowing that you're not as young as you used to be Learning. Learning is the key. <laughs> I really want to get into music because it's something that's forever. Music is forever and I wake up every morning listening to it. I cannot do anything. I can't function without music. And I started to realize, I'm like, this is something that I really want to do. And even if I realize it's something important because I don't care if it sells. Like, I want to say that I have an album. I want to have my own music. Mm -hmm. And even if no one else is jamming to it, I'm going to dance in the rings and my own music. You know? mm -hmm. So that's how I know I really want to do it. Mm -hmm. Selena, of course, so many people can say that, but Selena, J-Lo, Aaliyah, um, oh, I love Jayla. Yeah, Jayla, she's, she's dope. So she's, like, she's everything that I like. I would aspire to be. She's acting, a singer. And she's it's like, true. and also she's had multiple, you know, marriages, and she <laughs> and she doesn't give a shit. She's like, this is me. I love love. I love love too. I do. Mm -hmm. But um, I mean, I don't want to have multiple marriages. Look at that one. I do not like. I don't, <laughs> I don't even know if I want to do another one. Like, um, a lot of people post this stuff. I know. I thought no one was gonna ask me anything. I was like, Damn, they embarrassing me right now. I'm about, to, <laughs> I'm about to make fake accounts just to write my own question. <laughs> like, how do you... I don't know what I would ask myself. What's your biggest fear and has it happened? God, I don't know I was going to get that question. So I was, getting, <laughs> I was getting dressed in like, what if they ask me for my biggest fear? What's my biggest fear? And I thought to myself, I'm fearless and I'm going to tell you why. Okay. Except I am fucking scared of bugs, but I can, I can kill them. I kill them to be the kill water bugs. Come at me, bro. I got you. <laughs> but this tattoo right here, it says courage, mm -hmm. brave, and I have that because um, I feel like without God, I wouldn't be who I am today. Really, like I'm brainwashed and I'm fearless. Like I, one time, like, I, I I fought this big girl. She was big. Like, excuse me, excuse me, sorry, but she was big, and I was like, damn, I got fucked up. But I still, I was fearless. I was like, I'm, I'm, this girl wants to push me. I'm gonna smack her. I jumped up, smacked her. She threw me off the bus. I was like, damn. But anyway, I, I feel like to be honest with you. My biggest fear 
besides um, live, living in regret, besides that, um, is losing my grandmother. The day that I lose my grandmother is going to be so hard for me because, um, I mean, death is guaranteed, we know that. So that's why you have to cherish everyone. But if the, I can't imagine how or when or what is going to happen. Like, I don't want to get that phone call. Because when I got a phone call and she had a heart attack, I lost it. I lost control. I was running through Times Square. I ran like seven blocks to get to the train station. I couldn't breathe. I was crying. People on the train were giving me napkins. And she only had a heart attack. But thank God she survived that. But, like, that's my biggest fear. I want to go skydiving. I'm fearless. I'll go skydiving over Times Square. Oh, snap! Square. The Empire State Building. I'll do that. But <laughs> to my grandma, I'm like, you know me already? Some days you feel like giving up. And how does this person do it? So besides my, besides my grandmother, because she survived throat cancer, she doesn't have a voice anymore. She used to, we used to talk every day. Um, I talk about this lady a lot because she's big in my life. But um, when she was in the hospital, uh, the nurses would come in and like, she's so cute, she's so happy. And this lady, like, she's, she has cancer. Like, she had, a, she was this close to dying. If they didn't find that uh, the tumor, the tumor in her throat, she, it was closing her airway. Like, we couldn't even fit a pen through her airway. So she got so lucky, but she was always happy, still to this day, happy dancing. And like, just imagine one day you wake up and you can't talk anymore. Like, you can't express yourself. Like, you used to curse people out, and now you're just like, oh, like, you can't make no noise. So the fact that she wakes up every day, she's old, and, and she's trooping, and I'm just like, why should I complain about anything? Like, I, I can still walk, I can still sing, I can still talk, I can express myself, you know. So she's my motivation 1,000%, because anytime I want to give up, or the time I'm just like, fuck it, I'm just gonna move away, disappear. I'm like, no, my grandmother needs me. This pastor, um, Stephen Furtick, him and, and Joe Holstein, I look at their, their quotes that they post, um, and, and it helps me as well. Because there's days where I'm just like giving up, and I'm like, let me just go, I go to the page or go on Twitter or whatever, and I see it. I'm like, wow, I feel like that was for me. Someone also asked, uh, who is your favorite pastor or someone that you like? Yeah, I, I, not for nothing, I love Joe Holstein, and then I got discouraged when the whole, Hurricane Harvey happened, and there were people talking about how he didn't want to let people in the church. Mm -hmm. I was like, not listening to him no more. How could he not let people in the church? And then my mother was like, Jenny, you're judging. You don't even know what the situation mm -hmm. was. You're going based on what people were saying. She's like, do you think this man really would have? Like, maybe he just wants money. Maybe he just, you know. And she's like, you people diss you all the time, and they think that they know who you are. They don't know. So my mom put me on a place real quick. Mm -hmm. And then he explained himself, and I was like, okay, it makes sense. And I was like, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> even though he didn't even know I, I exist. I was like, I'm sorry, Joe. What's the look? He's one of my favorite pastors because he does make me smile. He does make me happy. Mm -hmm. And like, um, it's all about uplifting. He's very uplifting. How do you tune into his stuff? Do you watch it like on Instagram? I watch his stuff on YouTube. Stuff on TV, you know, but. My grandma's always watching her Spanish channel and I stay with grandma right now. And I know she loves it. I can tell. How do you get over a breakup? And how to stay fuckboy free? Okay. So, how to stay fuckboy free is <laughs> become a lesbian because they're everywhere. <laughs> no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> honestly, like I said earlier, instincts are everything. Mm -hmm. First of all, we have to remind us girls how, we're, how we should be treated. And we really should be treated with respect. A lot of us settle because we don't want to be conceited. We mm -hmm. feel like, oh, he probably thinks I'm conceited because I think that he should come pick me up or something, you know? But a lot of times we settle for fuckboyism because we we want to come off humble. And I've done that so many times. I, I want to, I want guys to know that I'm not full of myself and I'm humble. But sometimes I think I, ex I accept the lowest level at times because I want to be so humble. I'm like, no, I deserve more than this. I deserve more. Like, it's not even about money. It's just about mom and courtesy and just like, Mutual, you know, something I wouldn't do, don't do to me. You know what I'm saying? How do I deal with breakups? A lot of girls DM me about this all the time because they see that I was in a relationship and then they see when we split and they see that I'm still smiling and still happy. And I don't want them to think that I don't cry about it. That I don't think that I'm not hurt. But I'm the type of person that I don't feel like dwelling on my pain is a good answer. Because to, to sit there in my room and cry all day long, I can't because I, I'm too I'm too silly for that. And I, I want to make people laugh. Yeah. And um. I'm all for heartbreak songs. Like I used to, I love heartbreak songs. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! What's your favorite heartbreak song? Oh my god! Fuck! Uh, <laughs> you put me on the spot. Excuse me. I think me. mine is uh, X Factor by Lauren Hill. Oh my god! It could all be so simple. That yeah, song is dope. I love that song. Um, I love Janelle Aiko's songs. I She's don't good. need you, but I want you. That's I like awesome. That. Um, yeah, you ain't special. You ain't shit, and I made you. I be feeling like. That's my song. But anyway, um, I love heartbreak songs because it, it lets your emotions out and we're human, we have to cry. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. If you hold that in, you're gonna spaz about the stupidest thing. Like, yeah. you drop a napkin. What the? Like, <laughs> it's a napkin, it's okay. You know, you have to let out. Again, I'm all before, you have to pray and you have to cry. Okay. You have to learn from it. If you don't learn from it, you're gonna keep getting the same fuck boy over and over. You're like, damn, every guy's the same. No, it's just keep allowing the same thing. You keep picking the same guy because you haven't learned. God's gonna keep putting you with the same loser because you're not learning from the last one. Stop giving them everything so early. Why should we prove ourselves to someone that hasn't proven themselves to us? Mm. Why do we have to prove, like, oh, I'm loyal to you, so I'm only going to talk to you, but you're talking to seven other girls. Yeah. But I'm proving to you that I'm only loyal to you, but you haven't done anything for me to be loyal for. You haven't paid for my movie. We went half and half on the date. You, you know, you haven't made any kind of gesture to show that you're really interested in me. You didn't call me to see how my day was. You just been like, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? The same thing I was doing before. Watching fucking Netflix, okay? That's what I'm doing. We have to stop um, trying to prove ourselves to people who are not worthy. We need the old values back when it comes to that. Because back then they used to court you, spread you flowers, and they kind of talk to your dad first, and all that stuff. Like, you know, maybe dad's not around now. Talk to my mom first, my grandma first, and take me on dates before I sleep with you. Like, mm -hmm. you know, make effort. Sometimes you feel like um, you're doing all that for nothing, because then, whatever, at the end of the day, at least you've, you'll see the true colors eventually. Know? And um, just trust your instincts 100%. Because I feel like that's where I messed up. Because I noticed some signs and I ignored it because I was trying to be humble. Mm -hmm. And no, it's not about being humble, it's about being smart. If you were to see the future and your biggest desire didn't manifest, how would you do different? Would you change anything to make it happen or would you accept it and pursue something different? If my biggest dream, if I got to the future and my biggest dream didn't manifest, mm -hmm. the type of person that I am, um, I'm very good with losses, like a loss to me, I realize. Um, so I wouldn't go back and change anything. I would take it for what it is and, and do something else because there's so many things I want to do. I'm so grateful mm -hmm. that I have this brain of mine that wants to like do more, do more. So I'm like, you know what, okay, that didn't work. Um, like, like for example, singing, if the singing, rapping, whatever doesn't work for me, then there's like other things I want to do, like create my own show or build my own homeless shelter or something, you know? Um, so yeah, I wouldn't change anything. I take it for what it is and move forward and try something else. What advice would you give the authentic Pinky? Girl, <laughs> why are you doing your eyeliner like that? <laughs> oh my God. No, um, the advice I would give myself is um, don't, don't be so hard on yourself. Um, don't cry so much because if only you know all the people that are gonna, the people that are mean to you now are gonna love you in the couple of years and people are gonna criticize you because you shine and you have something different about you and um the pain does not last forever that's what i would tell my old self oh that's so cute <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much oh, for coming thank you for having me oh, yeah, i love this this is so great yeah i love it too